السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کنتم خیر امت اخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنحون عن المنکر وتؤمنون بالله ولو آمن أحل الكتاب لكان خير له منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم My dear brethren The ayah I read to you from the Holy Quran Surah Ali Imran Don't have to make notes Surah Ali Imran That is chapter number 3 verse number 110 in it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes as muslims this is kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas you are the best of people evolved for mankind not for yourselves but for mankind ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna anil munkar because you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ and you believe in Allah وَلَوْ آمَنَ أَحْلُ الْكِتَابِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ but if the people of the book who are the people of the book? the Jews and the Christians if they hearken to this message it will be better for them in other words it will be better for you مِنْ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ among them there are good people مُؤْمِنِ sincere faithful people among the Jews and the Christians Allah says there are good people I didn't want to say that we find them all troublemakers but Allah says there are among them goodly people مُؤْمِنُونَ وَأَكْثَرُهُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ but the majority of them are perverted transgressors this ayah this verse is such a versatile ayah so adaptable you can deliver a dozen different lectures on that ayah alone I as a layman I can do it myself a dozen different lectures different different topics but use this ayah and go on use this ayah as a foundation and carry on we haven't got the time for that we are going to deal with only the last phrase من هم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون. أمن دم there are good people but the majority of them are perverted transgressors. For the goodly people, in the booklet that has been given to you, in the back cover there is a list of other books. There is a list of on the right at the back back cover. Inside back cover there is a list of other books. There is a book there called what the Bible says about Muhammad, Muhammad the natural successor to Christ, Muhammad the greatest, Christ in Islam. These are the type of literature which you can use with the goodly Jews and the goodly Christians. But this morning we are going to specialize on wa aktharuhum al-fasikun but the majority of them are perverted transgressors. We are going to specialize only on that. This lecture actually is an injection in an inoculation I am trying to give you my brothers. Inoculation against the Christian menace. And inoculations are not present. I don't know if you went overseas and you go for inoculation, they give you anti-cholera injection. Very painful. Mm, they give you a fever after three days and swelling up. Painful. They love to do that. Your government love to do that to hurt you? No. They want to inoculate you to introduce a foreign substance, a disease creating body in your system that your body can be activated to fight against that and create its own antibodies for a similar sickness coming in later on, your body inside is already prepared for the cholera germ. As soon as it gets in, it fights, you don't even know what's happening. The body gets into gear, it does the job and you don't know to inoculate you. It's painful but it's necessary. So this exercise is the painful exercise for me, I'm sure as well as for you. I don't like it. Because we're going to deal with things which are not pleasant. Which we Muslims don't hear about. 
But you have to deal with it. Inoculation, you don't want to be pricked with that needle. Huh? And introducing foreign bodies in your body to create a fever. You don't like it, but it has to be done. This is something similar to that. Now, I have given you this booklet. With this booklet goes a tube of glue and a red pen in my country, the classes. But here this morning, last night we had a lecture and we thought we'll have a day to go and get, get the Bibles for you, the AK-47. You know, they're using a lot of them in South Africa, AK-47. So to give you the Christian Scud or the AK-47, this is the Christian Scud, AK-47, give to each and everybody. You come here, I said, now the Bible, he said, no, I left mine at home, he said, no, I haven't got it, where must I go and buy? Shh. Everything is ready for you, AK-47, everybody. How to turn this AK-47 against the Christian? We were going to give you this book and say paste it. But now, to do all that, we have taken time, so while we were busy getting things done, so like, come on, come on, do it, do it, do it. Brother Seva has a question, I said, no time for question. Glue, just do that job, that's all. <laughs> question afterwards. Come on, get the job done. So Alhamdulillah, you have done it. You have done, you are prepared now. This AK-47, or the Scud missile of the Christian, by adding this, you have turned it into a, a Patriot missile. It's how you can turn his own book against him. This is, that's all, that's what you're done. If I gave you this book, and you say it's very nice, very nice, and you take it home, you read it, you enjoy it, mm -hmm, very good, very good, very good. Then you put it with the other literature, your magazines, and the enemy comes, knocks at your door. And you want to know where's the combat kit? You look for combat kit, where? Or a friend comes along, they say, combat kit? Against Bible thumpers? So can I borrow this? Can you say no? No. It's gone. So your, your anti-patriot missile is gone. So therefore I said, now glue it down. If you lose this book, you lose the whole encyclopedia. Okay, let it go together. This book is now yours. The Bible is yours. Now inside, you have pasted it there. On the opposite side, put down your name and address. So make it personalized, your own copy. Your name and address. Put it down, your name and address. On the right hand side. Put it in nice big writing so you don't lose it. That's yours. This Bible is yours to take away home. Your name and address. there last night? How many of you were not there last night? Just put up your hands. Those who were not there last night in the Nurul Masjid and Nur, who were not there, please put up your hands. You all were there. Everybody was there, Masjid and Nur, last night yes. at the talk. Yes. So I don't have to repeat how this book came about, this combat kit. But just a reminder that in my trip to the Sudan, at question time, one of the university st students asked me a question that the Christian missionaries are coming into our country from Britain, from America, and we welcome them. And once they're seated, they are posing us the question. The question is, number one, you Muslims, do you live in the day of judgment? The Muslim says yes. It's all a planned strategy. You believe in the day of judgment? Yes. You said yes. So now after judgment is established, if you deserve heaven, you'll get it. If you deserve Jahannam, hell, you'll get it. You believe in that? Yes. You said yes. This Jannat of yours, where will it be? On earth or in the skies? What does your Quran say? He's, the dig is in the words, what does your Quran say? So if you said on earth, he said, show me. If you say in the skies, he said, show me. And he knows, it's an exercise he has done already, that 99% that of the Muslims will not be able to show. So it's an opening for him. He said, look, I gave you the first chance to show me what your Quran says. I want to learn from you. But since you can't teach me, I will now show you what my Bible says. So you can't say no. 
you are out of courtesy bound to listen to him. So he's going to push the Bible down your throat. So, he said, Mr. D, that, what is the answer? I didn't have the answer then. That's what I told my audience last night. I didn't have the answer then. <coughs> it means now I have the answer now. But at question time, nobody was interested to know. Nobody asked me about it. what is the answer. See, that means they were carried away with other things. Okay. So, I said, if this question was posed to me, I would confess to the Christian that I don't know. You must be honest. I don't know. That doesn't mean you'll be converted. That you have to accept his religion to get you baptized because you don't know. There are a lot of things which he doesn't know. Nobody, everybody is not supposed to know everything. So I don't know. And I'm ashamed of myself. Born Muslim, 75 years old, in the eyes of the people, knowledgeable fellow, and I don't know. It's a shame. Once having confessed that, I said, now look, I am ashamed of myself. I don't know my Quran as I ought to know. But I take it that you know your Bible. He is arrogant. He's there to push it down your throat. He's got one under his arm. So he said, of course. So can I have a look? So he gives it to you. He gives it to you. When he gives it to you, I said, I open up Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. I gave the reference last night. Maybe you forgot. Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. But now in this book, that combat kit, everybody has got. Now you open page 13. Unlucky number for somebody. Page 13 of the combat kit. Page 13, got it? Right. If you're going to fumble for page 13, I don't know what you're going to do when the enemy comes with an AK-47 and you start fumbling for page 13, you'll be lost. He would have slaughtered you by then. Page 13, everybody got it? Yes. yes. The first item on page 13. What is it? It talks about incest. Incest. It's a very strong term, very strong word. I went to a university. University, lecturing to university students, the same topic. And I'm asking anybody knows what is incest? And believe me, in that class, there was not one guy who knew the word incest. It's possible, it's not in your vocabulary, it's not used. You see the word incest, it's a very small letter, five letter word I think it is. But now, how many of you know what is incest without? You know. Generally people don't know, it's not used. Now adultery, you know adultery? Yes. You go and cohabit with somebody else's wife or daughter, that's adultery. Zina, very serious. In Islam, it's next to murder. Adultery, fornication. Incest is worse than that. Instead of somebody else's wife or daughter, you go and sleep with your own mother, with your own daughter, with your own sister, with your own daughter-in-law. That's worse than with somebody else's wife or daughter. Zina is very bad, next to murder. But this with your own mother, you have sex with your mother, you have sex with your daughter, is worse. That is incest. Sexual relationship between two persons who are too closely related, between whom there can't be any marriage. You can't marry your mother, you can't marry your sister, you can't marry your daughter, you can't marry your daughter-in-law. So that type of relationship. And the first item there, A, I want somebody to read it. Somebody to read it. Right. You, my brother, yes. You with the spectacles. Right. Read it loud. Let man say, for the daughter of the Lord, give you, your father Lord, why to drink and the older daughter are sexually intense into the room. The next day, the older daughter said to her sister, I slept with him last night. Now let's get him drunk again tonight and you sleep with him. Then each of us will have a child by, by our father. So that night they, get, they got him drunk and the younger daughter had intercourse with him. In, the, in this way, Bob of Lord's daughter became pregnant by their father. There you are, there you are. Hazrat Lut a prophet of God. We believe that prophets are sinless. And this prophet of God, Allah saved him from Sodom and Gomorrah. 
the destruction of those people. He saved him and his two daughters. And he has sex with his daughters night after night and he makes his daughters pregnant. Hmm? In a book of God. So we ask the Christian, read, read, make him to read. The Christian comes and knocks at your door. He wants to preach the Bible to you. He says, look man, I am hungry for this. I want you to read this for me. Open up Genesis chapter 19. Now you have to remember that. In your Bible you are going to mark this. On the side there, side there where you read that A, mark P15. P15 means P15 in your Bible. You will see that verse. P15. On the side, put down P15. So you don't have to look for Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. You don't understand. P15 in page 15 in your Bible. It will be there. Mark it P15. And open P15 now. Open P15. P15. Just put down P15. That's right. That means this thing you'll find in your Bible on page 15. Now, open page 15. Verse 30. Read it, my brother. You, doctor. Yes. Read it loud. Now, Lord went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the hills with his two daughters. For he was afraid to dwell in Zoar, so he dwelt in a cave with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man of up to come into us after the manner of all the up. Carry on. Come, let us make our father drink wine and rely with him that we may preserve offspring through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down on her on on, on all she or when she arose. And on the next day the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, uh -huh. that you may preserve offering through our father. Uh -huh. So they made their father drink wine that night also. And the young arose and lay with him. And he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. As though the daughters of Lord were child by their father. Right. This is the revised standard version of the Bible you have given. We went to buy at the Bible house the King James Version. And imagine that in Kenya, in the capital city, in the Bible house, there's not one King James Version. I don't know why. But they said, this is the one they have. I said, anything will do, man. <laughs> this is the Revised Standard Version. In the King James Version, there is a variation of words. You see, it says offspring. In that one, it says seed. Collect the seed of our father. In another Bible, King James again, is a lineage. Carry on the lineage of our father. His line of ancestry be carried on. Don't worry. Substantially, is the same. That both the daughters of Lot had sex with the father. And two bastard children were born. So, we are asking the Christian, if he reads it, or he's forcing you to read it, if he doesn't, it's all right, let me read it for you. Read it! Then ask him, what is the moral of this? What lesson you learn from that? That the daughters are so enthused, so inspired to have the father's seed, to have the father's babies. What is the moral? No moral. So it's immoral. If there's no moral, then it's immoral. That's all. You proved your case. In the book of God, God telling you stories about sexual intercourse between father and daughters without any lesson for you. What lesson you learn? No lesson. So it's an immoral book. It's a book of pornography. You're going to give this to daughters? And your daughters want to know, I'm going to ask you, she's reading, he say, collecting the father's seed. He say, daddy, what seed do you have, you know? So you explain to her, your daughter, you're going to explain to her, what seed? Uh -huh. Or she doesn't know, she asks an elder girl at school, he says, you know, he's collecting the father's seed. What is the seed? So the elder girl explains to her, he says, why do they do that? So, sexual lessons for your daughters and your sisters. This is an occasion for introducing sextology to them. Moral, no moral, immoral. In the book of God, ill befitting. Right. The next one, B, B, in 
incest between mother and son B page 13 B now on the side of B B put down P31 P31 that means in your Bible it will be on page 31 P31 you put down P31 that's right in your Bible it will be on page 31 on, in the King James Version it is on page 32 so now the numbering will go off the numbering will go off different, depending upon the different Bibles so therefore now this one because everybody has got the same Bible so I put down P31 but maybe in your Bible at home it might not be that number then you have to look up Genesis chapter 19 verse 30 to 34 and you'll have to circle those verses I want you to circle that verses like what I have done here I'll show you in your Bibles first at the beginning I'm sorry get on to page 15 get back to page 15 in your Bibles page 15 in your Bibles and right on the top right on the top look right on the top across the two pages write down incest between father and daughters in big writing right across big writing don't be afraid incest between father and daughters right across the two pages between father and daughters in the plural and underline it underline it then verses 30 to 38 circle them like this look look at this circle them circle them circle them in your Bible for easy reference 30 to 38 circle all those verses there see how I've done it here look at it see how I've done it circle it and when you have a highlighter at home highlight it so it becomes a color coded Bible for you, ready for use. Your AK 47. Da, da, da. Ready for use. Circle it. Yeah, I'm circled. Yeah, circle with the ruler. You do it. Right. And highlight it. Get the highlighter, highlight it. You know, make it shine out. So when you open, see, immediately. You don't start fumbling looking for it mm -hmm. it's there it hits you in the eye it hits anybody in the eye so you can remember it better at the bottom at the bottom across the two pages write incest between mother and son incest between mother and son at the bottom between mother and son put down P31 P31 that means you'll find it on page 31 so you don't have to start fumbling looking for anything while you're seeing this one so that next one is on page 31 so you open page 31 write down there P31 and open page 31 Right, page 31, you got it? Verse number 22, before that, you write down on the top, incest between mother and son, on the heading, on the top, on the top, incest between mother and son. Incest between mother and son. And verse number 22, circle it. Circle verse 22, circle it. Don't be afraid to disfigure this book. I have given it to you as your own property. Use it like your own, like your own wife. 
22. Circle it. Verse 22. 35. Verse 22. 22. Yes. Incest between mother and son. Verse 22. Now read it, my son. Read it. Loud. Verse 22. Yes, you. While Israel dwelt in that land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. Aha, uh -huh, right. And Israel heard it. MashaAllah. Israel. Who is Israel? Jacob. Jacob yeah. alayhi salam. The holy prophet. Jacob. Allah changed his name to Israel, soldier of God, the warrior for God. His eldest son, Reuben, his eldest son, he goes and sleeps with his mother, his father's wife, concubine, his father's wife. What is your father's wife to you? Mother. Your mother. Your father's wife is your mother. So this guy went and slept with his mother, had sex with his mother. And Israel heard it. Somebody told Jacob, Yaqub al Salam. He said, You know, your eldest son, he had a jolly good time with your wife, with his mother. That's all. He heard it. Did he react? Not one word. No reaction. <laughs> no reaction. Ima imagine an 80 year old man. <laughs> Crippled. Crippled 80 year old man. And somebody tells him that your son had sex with his mother. He's going to blow his tops. He's going to have a heart attack. I'm telling you. That 80 year semi cripple. Somebody tells him, his, your son, your eldest son, he has sex with your wife, with your, his mother. He's going to blow his tops. Hmm? He's helpless, poor fellow, but he's going to blow his top. He's going to have a heart attack. He's going to die. But Yaqub alayhi salam, he heard it. He heard it. That's all. This is your son, did it? No reaction. He didn't say you bloody bastard, you swine, you know, nothing, nothing. <laughs> What's the moral? What's the moral of that? What's the lesson you learn from that? Immoral. 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 Just telling you a story for the sake of story. We tell children fables for a moral lesson. Don't be like that greedy fox, my child. Can't get grapes, it's a sour grapes. Don't be like that greedy dog. Greedy father but dog's bones, it's you lose your own. Don't be like that. This is the lesson we are trying to teach our children with fables, fairy tales, stories. Here in the book of God, he is now, God Almighty is going out of his way to reveal to his holy prophet, Nalai Salaam, all this. All this. For what? Making his prophet, Dawu, Musa, to record all this. Because that's what the Christians say, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, these are the five books of Moses, Musa alayhi salam. And that means Allah told him to write all this, that your friend Lut, a prophet like you, your brother Lut, he has sex with his daughters. And that other guy, Yaqub's son, elder son, he has sex with his mother. What lesson? Yes, my son? Right. Now, to answer that, you'll find in your combat kit, the word Ketura, K. Since you asked the question, K, look for K in your combat kit. In your combat kit, Ketura. What was the question? His question was that some people say this concubine means a mistress, a woman kept your father's. But says the concubine is not a wife. K, K, K. Come on, my brothers, man. K. Ketura. You see the word Ketura there? Page 23. Page 23 of your combat kit. Ketura. Read that. Read that. Third wife of Abraham. Then 
great Abraham go to wife. Her name was Ketura. Right, right. Ketura being the wife of Abraham is being contradicted with the same self same word of God. For example, Chronicles 1 32. Right. Where Ketura is described as Abraham's concubine. Right, right. Right. There is an extra contradiction in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Less wife and concubine are synonymous terms. Synonymous terms, yes. Now in the same Bible, Keturah was the third wife of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. We only know about Sarah and Hajra, through whom he had one one son. But Keturah gave Abraham six sons, but nobody knows about it. The Bible records, Keturah was his third wife. So the Bible says, in one book of the Bible, it says God dictated to say Keturah is the wife of Abraham. And another, by another book of the Bible, God dictated, he says, he is his concubine. Now, if it is not the same thing, if it is not meaning the same thing, then it's a contradiction. How is it that God doesn't know the difference between a concubine and a wife? He's telling one guy, write down, dictating, write down wife, and he's telling the other guy, write concubine. If it means different things, then God is contradicting himself. Contradiction or means the same thing. No, it means the same thing. It's just a term, term you apply. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Those concubines were also his wives. So he's in a lesser degree, a more degree, they are his wives and to your children, they are the mothers. They are the mothers of your children. Right? You go into your, mother, to, into your wife and your child has got no right to sleep with his mother. That's what the Bible says. Moses was told. Anybody who discovers his father's nakedness, meaning going into his father's wives, kill him. Kill him. It's just like your mother. Just my son. So, we got that. Mm-hmm. Verse 22, we had it circled. At the bottom, you put down, at the bottom, at the bottom of page 31, you write down right across again, incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Put down P34. 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 And right, right across on page 34 on the top, right across, incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Verses 15 to 18, circle them. Verses 15 to 18, circle them. Of chapter 38. Verses 15 to 18, circle them. Verses 15 to 18, circle them. And highlight them at home. Read it brother, read it aloud. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot, for she had covered her face. 
he went over to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me that you may come into me? He answered, I will send you a cake from the flock. And she said, Will you give me a pledge till you send it? He said, What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet or end your cord and your stuff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her and she conceived by him. Right. Right. Circle that. We circled it. Now, this whole chapter 38, whole chapter 38, at home you must read it. You must have the background. The guy says, you're quoting out of context. Yes, no, no, I'll tell you the context. What the whole story is all about. Judah is the father of the Jewish race. Judah is the man from whom we get the word Judea, Judaism. Judah is Huda. Huda, you get Yahudi, all from that one name. Judah, Huda, Hudi, Yahudi, all Judaism, all from this man. He is the real father of the Jewish race. He gets married and he has three sons. Er, Onan and Shelah. That's chapter 38. Er, Onan and Shelah. And when Er is big enough, he gets married to a woman called Tamar. That's chapter 38. Tamar. But Er, he erred. He did something wrong in the sight of God. The Bible doesn't say what. So God killed him. It's a lesson to learn. You do things that God don't want, He can kill you. So now the old man tells his second son, Onan, he said, look, you go in into your brother's wife and beget child by her, so that the name of the deceased can carry on. They have very jealous to see that the name carries on. The brother is dead, left no offspring, his name will perish. So the name must not perish. So he's telling the second son that you go and do your duty by giving a child to your widowed sister-in-law. So Onan, he goes in and while he's about to ejaculate, the thought occurs to him that the seed is mine. But who will get the credit? My brother. Whose name that child will carry? My brother's. So that he didn't want to do. So he spills his seed on the ground. On the ground. So God killed him also. Lesson to learn. You're supposed to do your duty. You don't do your duty, God kills you for that also. Now we laugh at this bloody fool. You know that? Man, most unnatural thing to do. Nature made man and animals. At the most critical juncture, you want to go deepest in. <laughs> to plant the seed. But this guy, anti-climax. <laughs> The bastard. You'll all laugh. Huh? You'll laugh. But now you wash around. That sickness, almost everybody's got it. Do you know that? Everybody in Onanist. Everybody. You watch. Look. He says, you know, Mr. D that, uh, you know, that old man, he blew the lecture at night and in the morning the guy was there and he managed you know, to get the Bibles. He couldn't get everything that he wanted the way he wanted, but man, the poor fellow came along and you know, he delivered the talk. He, yes, but he was talking about all crap. But that was talking all crap. Yes. But, you know, this, this, this Imam, you know, fantastic Imam you got. So yes, but you know. <laughs> Something, something, we must find some fault with him. That's onanism. Everybody has got that. Somebody giving credit to your brother, you want to say, belittle him, but, but you see him, he's got, he smokes too much. You know? Damn it all, we're not talking about that. We're talking about that man's sacrifice for society, for the community, he does this, he does that, you know, selflessly, we get yes, but you are an onanist. You are an onanist. And watch, be on guard that we don't become onanists. But God killed him for that. So the old man tells his daughter-in-law, he said, look, you go and stay at your father's house till the third fellow is big enough to do his duty. But at the back of his mind, he's terrified. Because of this bloody woman, which, which, he lost two sons. See, old people have the superstition. Because of the woman now. I lost air, I lost Onan. Maybe the third guy also might go. 
So conveniently he forgot. He told her to go to her father's house and stay there. And I will call you when the time comes. But he didn't. So the woman is waiting. Shela has grown. Maybe he's got married to another woman. But the old man is not calling her. So she wants to take revenge on the father-in-law. So she gets the news that the old man was going to Timnath his farm to share his sheep. So she goes and sits by the roadside. She covers her face. So the old man passing by, he sees this woman and he's gay. Old man is gay. He comes up to her, he said, allow me to come in and do thee, means let me have sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? Teaching your daughters now, how to do bargaining. What will you give me? Not the first sex. Shit! You know, God will punish you. <laughs> what will you give me? You're teaching your sisters and your daughters to bargain their bodies. What will you give me? So he'll say, I'll give you a kid from the flock. Goat, goat kid. So what guarantee that you're going to give it? If you have sex, you enjoy me and you go away and you don't send it then? He said, what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet, your ring and your bracelet and your staff. So the old man gave it to her and he had intercourse with his daughter-in-law. And twins, the details is worth reading. The twins, how they're competing with one another to come out. The first one put out his hand from his mother's womb. And the nurse ties a scarlet thread. So this one came out first. But it's too sensitive so he pulls it back. So the other one comes out. So she calls his name Fares. Fares means the guy who breaks the queue. Takes other, does other people down for his turn. And then came out his brother with a scarlet thread, with the red, called his name Zara, because in Hebrew Zara means red, because he had the red thread. And who are these? In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, don't, 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 do you have to learn to remember this? The first book of the Bible, New Testament, Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1, it says that this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David, you know Abraham, you know David. Yes. And Abraham begat Isaac, you know Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob, you know Jacob. And Jacob begat Judas and his brother, and now you know Judas. And Judas begat Fares and Zara of Tamar. Now you're in deep waters. This is not deep waters. Who is this Fares and Zara and Tamar? So every Bible which has a cross reference will tell you Genesis chapter 38. So you go to chapter 38 and you find out is a father-in-law prohibiting with his daughter-in-law and producing bastard children, children of incest. They are the great grandfathers of the Christian God Jesus Christ. According to your Bible. A man who had no genealogy, you give him a genealogy of six, six fathers and grandfathers, out of whom six, six are bastards and begetters of bastards according to your book. Among them are these children of incest, great grandfathers of your God Jesus. What's the moral? What's the moral? With this rubbish, that guy is getting converts. And I say, you and I, we are not getting converts with the Quran. Reason, last night the brother said, because we are not talking. We don't talk. We mind our own business. We are good Muslims. You mind your own business. Your business is to mind everybody else's business. To save everybody from hellfire, that's your business. Allah has chosen you for that. Not to say just to sit down in the masjid, subhanallah, 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 and makes, uh, you know, says five times salah that I do, and I do chos and shrak and shh, awabin, you know, ten times a day I'm prepared to pray, and read the tasbih ten thousand times, Allah says, go and do the job. <laughs> go and call the guy. Ya Ahl al-Kitab Ta'ala. Come. Are you calling him? No. I don't know why. Allah is telling you, call him. You say, Allah, I'm prepared to read 10 times a day prayer. I can read 50 times a day and I'm going to read 10,000 times. Subhanallah. He said, call that fellow. Call him. He said, you know, I love you. I'm prepared to make kurbani for you. I go to Hajj and Umrah. He said, call that fellow. <laughs> this is the Muslim. He said, go and call that guy. And he says, you know, <laughs> however, right, we got it there at the bottom there, you put down, at the bottom, you put down incest, a rape, as I put down, rape and incest between brother and sister. Rape and incest between brother and sister. Put 
than P280. P280. Page 280. Page 280. Page 280. Page 280. And open page 280. In your Bible. The biblical reference will be 2 Samuel chapter 13. But 280, easy to find, page 280. There's only one page 280 there. <laughs> Got it? Page 280. Read from verse 5 to 14. Yes, my brother, you will read loudly. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill and when your father comes to see you, say to him, let my sister Tamar come and give me bread to eat and prepare the food in my sight that I might see it and I eat from her hand. So Anon lay down and pretended to be ill and when the king came to see him, Anon said to the king, Pray that my sister Tamar come and make a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house where he was lying down. And she took Tau and nailed it and made cakes in his sight and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and emptied it out before him. But she refused, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Send out everyone from me. So everyone went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber that I might eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. But when she brought them near to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this wanton folly. As for me, where could I carry my shame? And as for you, you could, uh, you would as, you would be as one of the wanton fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray you, speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. He raped her, brother. Rapes is not that's teaching you if you want to do something similar how to do the job. Same sickness, man, that you're not well, you're dying. So the father comes and asks you, What's wrong, my son? He says, I'm not well, daddy. You know, I like my sister to make the samosas, the bujiyas, you know, nice, nice cookies that she usually does. I like it from her hand. I want to see her do that for me. Uh, the poor father in good faith tells the daughter, go my child, go and do what your brother wants. And the brother, at the, when, she, when the poor sister brings it in, she closes the door and he rapes his sister. What's the moral of that? Nobody did anything to M1. The father didn't slap him, beat him, nothing. He raped his sister. The father, in the case of the Bible, is Dawud alayhi salam. He committed adultery with Uriah's wife and he had that guy murdered. Murderers and adulterers, prophets of God, murderers and adulterers. Other one, prophet of God committing incest with his daughters. Is, are these the examples for you? What is the moral? What is teaching you? Huh? And you want your daughters to read this? Your sisters to read this? Huh? George Bernard Shaw, he said the most dangerous book on earth, keep it under lock and key. Your children must not have access to it. And the Plain Truth magazine in one of the articles in the Bible says that the Bible and many a censor will give it an X rating. The Bible, God's word, gets an X rating. It's rubbish, crap, shit. God's book, 
No, because this is not the book of God. Allah says, فَوَيْلُ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِهِمْ ثُمَّ يَكُولُونَ حَازَ مِنْ مِنْ دِلَّهِ Woe to them who write the book with their own hands, then say this is from Allah. لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ سَمَنًا قَلِيلًا That they may reap from it some small benefit. Small benefit. The RSV, this Bible given to you. The first RSV they produced, they made 15 million dollars net profit on that Bible. Before they found out, they let the cat out of the bag. There are certain things there. We haven't got the time to go into all that. What is the RSV and what is the King James Version? We haven't got time for that. We only got time for this now, this inoculation. I just want to give you the inoculation that you can become a bad Muslim, a drunkard, an adulterer, a gambler, a rubbish. That we are ashamed of you as a Muslim. But you won't become a Christian. Not with that book. You don't, that's, this is the inoculation against the book. What I'm giving you all is an inoculation against the book. I won't make you a better Muslim. Hmm? How to make a salat and how to be a good Muslim that you learn from the Imams. This is just an injection that whatever happens to you, oh bloody rubbish. <laughs> no, I said, this guy, I'm ashamed of it. My Muslim brother, he did this. My Muslim brother did that. I'm ashamed of you. But you won't become a Christian with that bait. With that bait, he won't be able to catch you fish. That's all. At the bottom you put down, at the bottom you put down. Rape, at the bottom of that same page, 280 was it? 288. 288. 280. At the bottom you put down, rape and incest between son and his mothers. Not singular. It's becoming worse and worse. Getting worse. Rape and incest between son and his mothers. <laughs> and his mothers. Page. Put down P. Page 284. Just two pages away. Page 284. Page 284. Mothers. Mothers, yes, mothers in the plural. Mahatukum. Hmm? <coughs> you got page 284. Right down on the top, on the top, right down, right across. Rape and incest between son and his mothers. Heading. Rape and incest between son and his mothers. Between son and his mothers. And circle verse 22. Circle <coughs> verse 22. Chapter 16. Uh, chapter 16 verse 22, that's right. On page 284. On page 284, verse 22. Circle it. Just one verse. Read it, my brother. So they pitched a tent for Ab Absalom. Absalom, not the one of Dawud alayhi salam. Upon the roof and Absalom went to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Right. Now in those days... No, that's enough. 22. Right. Not the son of Dawud alayhi salam. Not the father like son. They say the father committed adultery with Uriah's wife. And we get a bastard child from her. Bathsheba. Then he had the husband murdered. A murderer and an adulterer, Dawud al-Islam. One son goes and rapes his sister. Another son, in the absence of the father on the palace roof, keeps up a tent, so the son doesn't get him. He's worried about the son, not about hellfire, about the son. And he puts ten of his father's wives, he sleeps them all, on the flat roof, and people can see what's going on there, on the flat roof. Flat roof! It was not twenty story building, it was just one story, two story, people can see, on the flat roof. What's this guy up to? You know, one woman sleeping, another one, another one, another one, ten of his father's wives. And he goes and rapes them all one by one to show his father a point. What point? <laughs> He's showing his father a point. <laughs> by raping his father's wives, his mothers, ten wholesale. He did it wholesale, not retail. 
Most of you business people are retail business people. That's wholesale. <laughs> ten, ten in a row, one by one. He rapes them all. God's book, book of God. That guy is getting customers. He's catching customers with this. He's getting clients. And you and I, we don't get clients. Simply because we are not doing the job. Right. Go back now to page 5 of your combat kit. Page 5 of your combat kit. Page 5 of your combat kit. Every reference in that combat kit, you must check it up at home in your spare time. Mark them up. Mark them up. Really prime. The Bible becomes really prime. But we can't afford to do all that at one sitting or half a dozen sittings. So I'm just giving you a cue, giving you a start that you may carry on from there. Page 5. The first item under absurdities in the book of God, the Holy Bible. Absurdities. A. A. See A there? Yes. What does it say? A talking ass. A donkey. <laughs> ass. 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 <laughs> talking ass. A talking donkey. Hmm? It would be better. Huh? Talking donkey. Donkey that talks. In the book of God. Now, there you have, say, a talking donkey. A, you put up an arrow. Look at this. Put up an arrow from there. And put down pages. Oh, you'll have to put down. You'll find the pages. I'm sorry. You'll have to find the pages because I didn't have a chance to do that exercise this morning. The RSV just came into my hand to give you the pages, pages. Because I've done it. Page so and so, page so and so. Next one. Four footed fowls. Page so and so. Next one. <laughs> I'll give you this. Now you'll have to check up the references and put down the page there. So make it easy reference. Instead of saying Samuel, 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 where are going to find Samuel? Where are you going to find Leviticus? Where are you going to find Leviticus? The judges, Judges, Book of Judges. Where the hell are you going to find it? So make it for easier references. A talking ass. You check up. Numbers. Find the book of numbers. Reference. And you say, put down the page. Right. Four footed fowls. A chicken with four legs. Have you seen one? No. What? Is God? <laughs> in this book of God. Four footed chickens, you know. Four drumsticks for every chicken. Man, I tell you, you can become a millionaire. You'll beat all the chicken farmers. You know that? Your chicken will have four legs. So four drumsticks for every chicken. <laughs> People love drumsticks. You know those drumsticks. Right. See, birth of females, double pollution. They keep on talking about in Islam, woman has got no position. You know, she's looked down upon, she's rubbish, she's a chattel. They say, hey, hey, especially the women are talking. They say, look, you, you are a double filth. According to your book of God, you are a double pollution. If your mother gave birth to a son, she's impure for seven days. But when she gave birth to you, she was impure for 14 days. You are a double rubbish. In your book of God, according to your God's law. Your mother was doubly filthy, dirty, polluted because she gave birth to you. And you say God is a merciful God and everybody is equal. We are equal. Double pollution. Boy is born, seven days impure. Girl is born, 14 days. Biologically, what's the difference? Whether the child is uh, illegitimate or legitimate, what's the difference? Absolutely. Whether the child is a boy or a girl, what's the difference? Absolutely. There's a doctor here. He can confirm. He says, no, there's no difference. Absolutely. Whether the child is illegitimate or legitimate. In the delivery of the child, carrying of the child, no difference. Hmm? And whether it's a boy or a girl, no difference. Unless, you know, God Almighty is revealed some new revelation. The Holy Ghost comes along and gives them something new. I don't know. But this is it. Right, next one. Sh Shamgar kills 600 Palestinians with an ox gold. Can you imagine? This battle is going on between the Palestinians and the Jews for some 3,000 years. No, it's a conflict that's going on. 3,000 year old conflict this is. There's nothing new today. At one stage, one Jew, one Jew. One Jew with a stick. 
they use it for goading oxen. In India, I have seen it. They stick with a little nail in front of it. So the poor oxen, you know, they go, go and they slow down so the people, they prod it. They call it a goad, you're goading it on. It? It's encouraging it to move faster. So the poor thing uh, does and again slows down. So <laughs> give it another one. With that stick with a little nail in front of it, this Jew, one Jew, he killed 600 Palestinians. And ask him what are the Palestinians are doing. Damn it all, they didn't even run away. Huh? Me, 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 even if I was a superman, with a stick, with a nail, he want to kill you all. Man, where, where, where do I start? This is uncle, here, 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 here. You know, uncle, here. <laughs> Next one, uncle. <laughs> Don't miss it. <laughs> to kill 600 men. Huh? This 600 guys, if they only spat on the guy, the guy would have suffocated. <laughs> they didn't even run away. <laughs> what kind of Palestinians is that? <laughs> you believe that? Huh? 600 and one man killed 600 with a little stick, with a nail. But this is all fairy tales. The guy's catching fish with it. Hmm? So, huh? No, no, that doesn't. Did he kill 600? Then the next one, says Samson killed a thousand. Next item, with the jawbone of a donkey. He killed a thousand Palestinians with the jawbone of a donkey. <laughs> thousand, one thousand Palestinians. You know what's a thousand? You know, this, this 30, 40 people make, makes this class formidable. One thousand! Huh? And what were the thousand doing? They didn't even run away. <laughs> and how do you kill? With the jawbone of a donkey. Wait, 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 wait. And the next one, <laughs> one thousand, and they just waited in to be killed. <laughs> you believe that? Oh. In this fairy tale of a book, you have to accept it's the word of God. The Christians say this is what God. Huh? Yes. All right. A seven-headed leopard. F. <laughs> I know you haven't seen one. No, you are likely to see one. Seven-headed leopard, you find the reference there. He had ten horns on each, every head. And every horn had ten, ten crowns. What a sight. One leopard with seven heads, and every head got ten, ten horns, and every horn ten, ten crowns. Book of God. Then it speaks the other references to eat shit and drink piss. You must check it up. In the book of God, man is told you must eat shit, 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 masimba, you know, it's excreta, and drink piss. Then the next one it says, dung on your faces, shit. God says, you know, he's going to plaster you with shit on your faces. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> then it says to eat cake with shit. God Almighty tells his prophet, he says, you, I want you to bake barley cakes with shit which come out in your sight, means fresh, fresh shit. Fresh, not stale, not done, dried up. Mm -hmm. Take it fresh, that come out in your sight. You see the guy shitting and you know, nice, nice, warm, steaming. <laughs> with that, your barley cakes and you eat. So this prophet of God, he cries to God, he says, oh my Lord, I never had things like this in my life before. <laughs> Have mercy on me. <laughs> He said, all right, I replaced it, man shit with cow dung, cow shit. You can mix it with cow shit. Mercy, merciful God. <laughs> then, J, Samson has sex with a whore in Gaza. Chapter 16, verse 1 of the book of Judges, he read there, and Samson went to Gaza, same Gaza. The one they are fighting over now. Same place. Gaza Strip. Gaza Strip, yes. So he goes to Gaza, the Samson is a hero of the Jews. In the Bible, he is like a holy man, godly person, Samson. He goes to Gaza and he sees a whore, a harlot, a hooker, a prostitute, and he goes in unto her. That's all. That's all. What's the lesson? Like James Bond. You know, I don't know, you saw 007, 007. <laughs> now, wherever he sees a woman, he goes into bed with her. Well, 007, 007. You know, you saw James Bond, 007. You saw. <laughs> He sees a woman, he's gone to bed with her. Everybody is waiting, the woman is waiting. He just got to go, right. Samson does this. Ian Fleming got his ideas from the book of Judges. <laughs> that guy goes to Gaza and he had sex with her. He went in unto her. Right, page 8, this is the last page for our exercise this morning. Page 8. Page 8. 
God. Item number 10, God. Qualities ill befitting God. God in the Bible. This is what the Bible describes him. Number A, he is a hissing God. Who hisses? Snakes. The lions roar, the dogs bark, the sheep bleed, the cows moo. Who hisses? Snakes. So God comes down to the level of a snake. He was to call you this. <laughs> Three places in the Bible, God is hissing, hissing. From the ends of the earth, he hisses. For the fly. He is calling the fly from the ends of the earth. <laughs> this is God. Uh, number two, B. He is a roaring God. He roars like a lamb. To terrify you. <laughs> they haven't stood and he's a barking dog. He's a barking God. God, dog, you know, just put spell it the other way around. So God says, so well, he's a barking, no, no, he's a roaring, he's a roaring God. He roars like a lion. Ah, see, he's a barber God. He's telling you, you check up, you check up. He says, I'm going to shave the hair on your head with a hired razor, not one his own. Poor God, he hasn't got one of his own. With a hired razor, shave the hair on your head and your beard and the hair on your legs. No barber ever does that. You know that in, in India, where we come from, the barbers, poor chefs. You see, the poor barber, he does everything. He cuts your nail, uh, he, he cuts your hair, he shaves your hair, and underarm hair he removes. Then in India, I see the barbers come along and say, right, okay, he does everything for you, say, right, okay. so he shaves your hair. But no barber ever shaves people's hairs on the legs. <laughs> but God does that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shave your hair on your legs. I said, how high does he go? How high? <laughs> Where does he end? <laughs> hmm. He's a penitent God. You see, he made a mistake in making man. So he says, toba, toba, toba. <laughs> I, I made this man, this man Adam and Eve, for this now, shh, after 4,000 years, I have to go into a woman's womb, Mary, live there for nine months, and be born like every other human child with all the filth and the muck, and get circumcised on the eighth day. Who? God! Jesus Christ is God, they say. So this God came and stayed in his mother's womb for nine months. He ate the menses, and he came out to the same filthy hole like you and me, and got circumcised on the eighth day. So he's saying, Toba, 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 for making this creature a man, rubbish, you know, disobedient. For you, I have to do all this. He's making Toba. Allah is making Toba for creating you. He didn't know what he was making. A God riding a cherub. Right. Anybody tell me what is a cherub? I give you a videotape. Huh? Huh? I got only three. Right, right. Yes. I think it's a second picture from the Egyptians with the weird head. Right. Next one. Next one. The little angel. Angel like a guy. you are right two of you are right ah. an angel is a beautiful woman with wings that is the western concept a well proportioned woman 36 24 36 with wings a mature woman about 24 25 30 that's an angel according to Western artistry, design, drawings, art. Um, she is a crisp young thing, 12 year old, the same thing but when she was 12, you know, when she's 14, the little, little tits, not 36 proportion, you know, that is called a chirub. Now you understand? Two brothers had it right. Chirub means a very young, crisp thing, not an old, mature thing. Angel is an old, mature woman. Chirub is young, crisp, crisp. Bara Baraski, Chavda Baraski, 12 year old. And God is riding her. 
He hasn't got a helicopter. He rides these little girls. God Almighty. He's riding cherubs. You know, like the Superman, the Bat, huh? Superman, the Batman. He goes like this, like that. Huh? So God Almighty, he can't do that. He's got to ride an angel, a little thing. The only question is, is he riding on her back or on her stomach? How does he ride her? And what is she wearing? These cherubs, what do they wear? Hmm? Riding on her back, that means holding a sari doesn't drop off, God Almighty riding a chirub. Or on her stomach, he's riding her on her stomach and making her back stroke, you know, of the wings. <laughs> God riding a chirub. And he's flying. Like the Superman, he flies from here to there. God Almighty, he flies. God Almighty. You bring him down to the level of a, I don't know. Shiru. Ha, the last item. A God who murders 50,070 persons for looking into a box. Hmm. This box here. This box here, I'm going to leave it there at the entrance. And I'm warning you people. Anybody who looks into this box, I'll kill you. I'm serious. Anybody who looks into the box, I'll kill you. Okay? You understood? My instructions? Anybody looking into the box, I'll kill you. And I leave the box there at the entrance. And you start going out. The first guy, he looks into the box. I had promised, I'll kill you. Say! The first guy. Say! I forgot, Ma, forgive me, you know, I may be a sadist. Hmm? I said, I'll kill you, I kill you. But by killing you, I saved 50,069 lives. I should be merciful. You made a mistake, you cry, say, I'm sorry, please, my Lord, forgive me, Mr. D. Dad, please forgive me, you know, I, I just forgot. I should forgive. And I'm still saving 50,070, all of you. But no, no, no. This loving father in heaven, they say he's a loving father in heaven, not like the God of Islam. He's a tyrant. Huh? He's will put you into hell. Not our loving father in heaven. He allows 50,070 to march pass by. March past. How long does that take? You know, the Queen of England when she dies, or Chris Honey when he died, the people passing by, in state, lying in state to see him, final respects, for 50,070 persons to pass by to have a look in the box, it will take a week. Do you know that? Single file. 50,070, you know what's 50,070? It will take a week. And God waited. Right. Making his mouth water. <laughs> 50,001, 50,002, 50,050. He's waiting, waiting. And when 50,070 have passed, he blots them all out. He kills them all. Widows, 50,000 women, and often 100,000 children for looking into a box. Merciful God, loving Father in heaven. You call me a loving Father. If I did that to you for looking into a box, I kill one of you. Huh? You love me for that. But with this book, with this crap, that guy is getting customers. I want you to be on guard. That's all. With this rubbish, he's getting customers. And you and I, we are not getting customers with the Quran. That's my cry. That we must do something about it. Turn the tables, man. Look for them. Your neighbors, call them. He said, start a chat. The good guy, talk to him about the Quran. The birth of Jesus. From Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 42. Read it to them. Read it to them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa his qalatil malaika to ya Maryamu. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna Allah has tafaki, wa mutaharaki, wa stafaki ala nisail alameen. That Allah has chosen thee and purified thee, chosen thee above the women of all nations. Talk to them. Talk to them. Show them what Allah 
Allah says in the Quran about Jesus Christ, about his mother Mary, talk to them. The guy the fighter will fight you, you know, find fault with the Prophet, about Islam and all that, then he needs a sledgehammer. This is a sledgehammer. Then you turn the tables. But you start. Bil hikmati, kindness, mercy, compassion, hospitality, your tea, your coffee, your coke, your bhajiyas, your samosas, you know, your cookies. Give them, feed them, call them, talk to them. Right, any questions, my dear brother? Any questions? Yes, my son. In the Quran, God referred to the Christians as the Jews. And among them, there are some good ones. And uh, uh, among them also, there are bad ones. Those good ones, are they right in their own right? They, are they correct? Are they, is God pleased with the way we go to them? No, there are good ones. See, Allah is telling you that your job that your job as a Muslim Allah chose you as the best of people you have to do a job, job of work the very first people you should start with are the Jews and the Christians why? because they are already prepared to receive the message despite all the rubbish they have a concept of God they have a concept of prophethood they have a concept of right and wrong you are the closest to them so talk to them but now when you want to talk to them you will find two types of people among them there is a goodly guy when you talk to him he appreciates Muslim virtues he said look we Muslims we don't drink we don't gamble we don't date we don't court we don't dance he says good 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 sir you are good people you are good people he appreciates Muslim virtues your hospitality your hygiene whatever you explain he appreciates it he's not converted but he appreciates it he's not fighting you so there is that type of customer talk to him he's the best he's listening to you he's giving you a hearing there's another type the experience we have the guy who's knocking at our doors he wants to send you to hell he says you you got everything very nice but you're going to go to hell you got no savior who died for your sins Christ died for mine who died for yours he's now out for a fight so now there are two types of customers there is a guy who's going to give you a hearing there are types like Michael H. Hart he's written a book the hundred he was in the news yesterday in the Sunday papers in South Africa Michael H. Hart he wrote a book the hundred or the top hundred or the greatest hundred in history a book of 572 pages about five years ago retailing for fifteen dollars in America and in that book he says Muhammad is number one the most influential man in history from Adam alayhi salam up to today is number one Muhammad and his God and Savior Jesus Christ number three would you say he's a good Christian? wouldn't you say he's a good Christian? Yes, look that guy man what, what motive? he wrote a book he's going to do business who will buy his books? not the Arabs not the Bangladeshis not the Swahilis huh? who will buy his books? the Americans the, the 200 million Christians of America 6 million Jews of America they'll be his our customers first customers and he's telling them that not the hero not Moses is number 40 Moses is number 40 <laughs> the Jews is telling Moses is number 40 in his list Muhammad number 1 <laughs> Then Lamartine, in his history of the Turks, he says, if greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and outstanding results are the three criteria of human greatness, who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? He dares you to bring your candidate to compare with Muhammad. <coughs> and so on. Thomas Kalai. And so on and so on. We find there are goodly people among them. And Allah describes them in the Holy Quran. In Surah 4, verse 85, Allah says 485 chapter 4 verse 85 485 
closest and nearest in faith to the believers, you will find those who say we are Christians. Because among them there are men devoted to learning and men who have renounced the world and people who are not arrogant among the Christians. The nearest to the Muslims, Allah says, will have found those who say we are Nasara. Qalu inna Nasara. Zalika bianna minhum kisisina wa ruhbanum wa annum la yastakbirun. So there are people. I said 44 and... Huh? 485. I said 485, but I can't seem to... It was 485, and I'm looking at this. 486. I have missed wrong, wrong reference. It's not that, yes. That's how it's... 585. Oh, 585. Let's see, 585. Right, I'm sorry, my brothers. It's 585. 585. 585. So, what do الذين قالوا إن نصارى ذلك بأن منهم كسيسين ورهبانا وأنهم لا يستكبرون. Allah says, and nearest among them in love to the believers, to the Muslims, will thou find those who say we are Christians, because amongst these are men devoted to learning and men who have renounced the world and they are not arrogant. And Yusuf Ali in his commentary he says. The meaning is not that they merely call themselves Christians, but they are such sincere Christians that they appreciate Muslim virtues, as did the Abyssinians to whom Muslim refugees went during the persecution in Makkah. They would say, it is true we are Christians, but we understand your point of view and we know you are good men. Yusuf Ali says, they are Muslims at heart, whatever the label may be. They are Muslims at heart. So, and they